Hi, welcome to our video today. We're live at Atarian. I'm Laurent, Head of Product Marketing. And today, we're going to talk about product. More specifically, we're going to talk about Skynote. Now, if you are following us closely, um, you might think or you might ask yourself, well, Atarian, you're a software company, so why are you going to talk about a hardware product? And with Skynote, for us, it's really not um, primarily about the piece of hardware. It's really, for us, an enabler for our software. Because to bring our software into drone products, we work closely and we partner with drone manufacturers so that they can use our software platform as part of their drone solutions. And for us to make it easy and to make it efficient and quick for new partners to get started, we created Skynote, really to get started with the software easily, to enable them to use our software. And then if we start the conversation with new um, drone manufacturers, drone developers, there is a series of questions, obviously, that pop up. And this is exactly the content of today's video. So I'm very happy to have Nico here today. And I'm going to talk to Nico about these questions and how, basically, drone manufacturers walk through the development process. Nico is the engineering manager of our Skyno team. I'm super happy to have him here. And yeah, maybe we'll let, let's start with a little introduction of yourself. Thank you, Laura. Uh, yes, I'm Nico. I've been with Atarian for about three years by now which for a young company is a good amount of time. And yeah, I'm happy to answer all your Skynote-related questions today. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. So usually when we get into the conversation with these drone manufacturers, the first question they ask is, well, how to get started? How do we get started with Skynote? How do we get started with the Otarian software platform? Right, exactly. Great question. So when you open the box, the first thing that uh, appears is this beautiful, shiny orange box. So obviously, the first thing you want to do is power it on and see if it does something uh, interesting. Yeah, get your hands dirty. With exactly, it, right? exactly. So that, that's what everybody does. So um, when you have Skynote, the first thing you want to get it running just on your bench without flying, just power it on and see what interesting things it can do. So um, you get all these parts together in your dev kit. So you would uh, apply power to Skynote. And what I like to do first is I connect the Wi-Fi antenna because right. that's one of the most convenient ways to connect to your Skynode. And from there, uh, Skynode actually creates an access point that you can connect to from, for example, a tablet or a laptop or whatever you have at hand. So once the Skynode access point is created and you have connected to it, um, you can simply open up Otarian Mission Control and voila, you have a connection to your Skynode. And um, that's usually the very first thing and the very first sanity check to make sure you're online, Skynode's running, all right. and all the systems but, but, are healthy. And how do you basically, re like, how do you get the connect? How do you see that you're connected and how can you interact with the system now? Right. So, um, Skynote features an autopilot, uh, PixHawk based, the latest FMU V5X standard, but it actually uh, goes much beyond that. So, um, for example, it has a mission computer, and you can really leverage the power of a mission computer uh, when you're connecting payloads. So that's a computer which is basically inside that orange box. Exactly. So it has a flight controller and a mission computer. Right. So flight controller handles everything in the air, like spinning the propellers correctly and, and doing all, all the fancy things to fly. But handling a camera or, or even a more complex payload is a more difficult task that requires a more powerful computer. Okay. But Skynote has all of that already integrated in this beautiful orange box. And I can demonstrate that by simply plugging in a regular USB camera here, um, standing as an example for, for a much larger camera you would want to use on a larger system. And right away, you get full camera integration, video streaming. You can take pictures. And that there's a picture of Laurent. And it actually go, <laughs> goes a lot beyond that because um, there's not just the video stream, but these pictures, of course, when you have GPS, they get geotagged. There's a photo gallery and all of that. So it really takes the uh, autopilot to the next level. Okay. So now you were talking about, so we have different components here, right? We have an antenna, we have a power module, and you were quickly mentioning the evaluation kit. So, so it's not just the box that you would start with, right? Right. So, um, the the next thing you would want to do is probably connect your uh, LTE antennas, right? Okay. So beyond the mission computer, it also has an LTE module. So Skynode is online at all times. So as as soon as you 
fly, for example, there will be a flight log that gets immediately uploaded to the suite. The suite, OK, what's the suite? <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the Ethereum suite is, is actually, a, it's a whole other product that we have. So um, it, it enables you to do, um, for example, when you have a full scale operation, you can do fleet management, uh, understand the health of your vehicles, right. but also as you're uh, as a developer you're maybe bringing up and developing your first airframe flight logs are an, a crucial part of that so the other thing i like to verify very early on is that sky now communicates with the suite correctly so i attach the lt antennas and maybe arm the vehicle right away to make sure that it's actually talking to the suite and i can see flight logs right in there so when i do run into an issue later down the road I will know it immediately in the suite, or I'll get warned in advance. So it's it's like a debugging tool for developers. Exactly. So it can be both. It can be a debugging tool for developers that speeds up um, the, the product to the market and, and the whole uh, engineering parts. But it can also be the operational side. So once you're fully deployed, there's a lot of fleet management uh, features in there. OK, and 4G is basically also built in to, to SkyNode. Right, SkyNote, we actually ship it uh, with a SIM card included. OK. Um, so it's already online and ready to go. Oh, so you mean it's basically out of the box. You can connect to a cellular network, and there is a connection to the suite. Correct. All right. Correct. Thanks. You will need to attach the LT and S. All right. But that's about it. All right. OK, so now you mentioned the mission computer before. The mission computer basically that enables things like payload integration that you quickly showed, like the integration of the camera and the ability to take pictures, change settings, et cetera. And um, what else can the mission computer do? Uh, <laughs> the mission computer, really, the sky is the limit. So um, you can develop any custom application you want. Um, if Whether you have a very fancy payload, you want to have um, run, run some computer vision algorithms, or integrate with the suite directly. There, you can actually develop just about anything you might imagine and run it directly on SkyNode. OK, so you can apply or deploy software on the SkyNode that interacts with the other components, like the flight controller or right. the payload manager. Right. OK, you oh, could wow. okay. talk okay. to the suite. You could talk to the payloads. OK, so we are actually going like way down the road of the details. Now, coming back to where we started initially, so how to get started. So obviously, it's very easy to set it up to get connectivity, to see how it works, to get your hands on it. But now that's on a bench, right? So now right. you are like, you have connectivity, you know it works. So what's your next step after that? Right. So the next step, maybe when I get bored playing with my camera, is obviously, I want to go fly. And that's exactly what we do next. So. Um, a, a common way to go about that is to use a very, maybe a cheap or a basic frame first. So here is something um, I've built quite some time ago. This is one of the very first SkyNotes we built. It's been through quite a lot. Um, see, it has my name on it. Um, but uh, you will put it on some regular quad rotor in this case and see if you can take it to the skies. And actually, really, it doesn't take much. So there's these breakout boards that uh, expose all the connectors that you may be used to if you're from the PixHawk universe. And then you can fly it just like uh, your autopilot and that you're used to. You get all these parts already in the dev kit minus the airframe. Itself. OK, so I can see like some similar parts like the camera and the power module. Right. But there is also like more components to it here, right? Exactly. There, there, this is actually pretty much the entire evaluation kit put together okay. um, on a, a very basic airframe. So there's the radio module uh, that handles uh, connection to the ground station. There's a GPS module, a very high quality one. Uh, I even put the camera on it and a distance sensor all on this airframe. So uh, as this is basically the evaluation kit put together, that's the most basic way to get SkyNode up in the air. That's the logical next step. OK, so day one, I put my SkyNote on the bench. Day two, I put it, on the, two. <laughs> I put it on the airframe. I get it up in the air. Uh, like I have a proof of concept. I have this prototype, which is obviously not a product. Now I'm convinced of it, and I want to go into actual product development. So right. how do I proceed from here? So when 
obviously you start with the parts that are already in the evaluation kit because we've tested them, we know they work and they're very reliable. So maybe as next you want to remove this cheap uh, uh, basic camera that we've included and uh, hook a very expensive, maybe a Sony camera to it, or maybe you have your custom payload and you want to do that integration. At this point, your team can actually parallelize. You can have some developers working on the payload integration while some other uh, team are, are, is working with the hardware and developing the next generation vehicle. So, so for we... payload integration, let's let's quickly stay with the payload integration. Yeah. So we saw that basically this, this, this UEC um, USB camera here works out of the box. Now you're talking, you mentioned the Sony camera. So let's assume I have a Sony camera and I want to integrate it. So do I need to like code? And you you don't or... have to do a thing, no. The, so the Sony camera is actually our supported list of payloads. It goes far beyond just the Sony. There's the Trilliums. There's a, I, I don't want to, I don't remember even um, every single camera that we support. Um, but those are plug and play just like this one. Okay. Um, what I meant, meant there is that if you have a very fancy custom application that you want to do, you could develop that in parallel as uh, some other people in your team are maybe developing the airframe. Okay. So that that's where you could create your own custom application and integrate that way, or use our payload dev kit to integrate a camera that Atarian doesn't support out of the box just yet. Okay. And and one of the questions that I heard when I was on on in conversation with with manufacturers as well around payloads is geotagging. A lot of people actually manufacturers are asked by their end customers, can you geotag for like inspection flights or mapping flights because that's an important piece of information. Right, right. That, that's uh, actually automatically done by the Atarian software stack and that's one of the great advantages of such a tight integration. Um, in, in the older uh, universe that was a lot harder because the, the pictures would live on the camera and then you would have in hindsight to, to understand when the pictures were taken and what the um, geo information was at that time. So that's something we can do in real time on SkyNote directly. Okay, okay, interesting. All right, so again, let's go back to the, to the development process. So also, if I look at that box, I mean, and that if I look at the size of the drone, let's assume I'm developing a drone of a similar size. I mean, there's no way I can fit that box into the airframe because I wouldn't want to look it like this, right? Right. Right, so this doesn't quite look like a product you may want to sell. So there's a few right. steps that you need to do next. Okay. Um, so depending on your size constraints, there's actually other versions of SkyNote, like the SkyNote OEM that you could go to, um, that is actually a lot smaller if you compare it. And this one still has a heat sink on it, um, which if you uh, want to integrate more closely into into a, an airframe or a larger one, you could remove the heat sink and, and sink the heat through your enclosure. And that really brings the form factor down to, yeah, just just a few centimeters. That's a it's really small and handy part that can fit into into tight uh, spaces. And it's also a good amount lighter. But it's 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 essentially the same, the content of the box, basically. Is, this is the exact same. Yes, we have the LT module here on the bottom. There's the mission computer here, there's the IMU and the FMU, and all the same connectors that you have on SkyNote. So this is functionally exactly the same. Okay. All right. So, so I can go on and I can use this unit to build it into my airframe. Now, exactly. it's, it's, there's still like a specific form and size to it. Now, if I have a very small drone or if it just doesn't fit into the airframe or if it even like there's maybe a connector that I don't want or don't need or there's an additional connector that I want. What can I do to customize this? Right. So if you don't need that connector, for example, you don't have to put it on there. So you can get the reference design for SkyNode. And from there on, um, you can um, build SkyNodes that don't have that connector, that maybe have a form factor that fits more uh, closely into your specific airframe. So that's also something uh, we offer to get the reference design directly. Um, particularly when you go into very tight integrations or very small airframes, that will be a way to go and, and to make it even smaller. Okay. So that's basically probably when I go into like, let's say mass production or into like production of a, of, of a final product. So then I would actually use the reference design 
uh, and create my own form factor just to make sure that it is in like in line with the rest right. of the design right right the form factor or yeah the connectors or, or whatever else may need to be custom for your application okay so okay and so another question that we hear a lot actually because we, we talked about quite a process now so it starts with prototyping on the bench in the air um different form factors and maybe i use multiple vehicles and so along that way there's usually a lot of questions that i might have even though it's it's as easy as plug and play at the beginning so how do we interact does how does otarian interact with the manufacturing partner to make sure that the whole development is smooth and efficient so um, we support actually a, a variety of, of ways to, to interact with our customers. So on the one hand, there's the Aterian suite through which our customers can directly share uh, flight logs um, with us and, and our experts can have a look at it. We also support, offer support packages um, and SLA agreements. So actually, um, and this happened recently with a customer, um, for example, they may um, have some configuration issues on the ground and um, they can call us up and within literally a few minutes, we can um, access their issue, understand what's going on, fix it in real time. And in this specific instance, um, with a few minutes delay, they can successfully run their entire operation. Okay, that, and that's mostly because what you explained about sharing the logs and um, being online. So the customers also have an, a way of sharing this data with us if they want to, right? Exactly, okay. yes. Okay. In real time, actually. So the Aterian suite analyzes the flight logs. It can also predict issues and understand um, with the automated checks, if maybe there, there's some concern, maybe a motor is wearing out um, or the vibrations are too high or something like that. And um, so even if this were the case during a flight, we could look at that and um, see if they need to come in for a landing. Awesome. Okay. All right. So we've seen the bench. We've seen the prototype. I think what's missing now is a product that actually contains SkyNote, as you described, right? And, and one example that we have here is the Astro, um, the free fly drone, which very soon will be delivered to the first cast customers. And I think it's, it's a very good example of an, an actual product that now contains SkyNode, but not in the form of an orange box, right? Exactly. This is ex literally exactly the, the case that happened. So um, free fly was using our reference design. Um, they customize it just a little bit in terms of the heat solution, for example. And from there on, um, it, it's pure SkyNode. It's running the Aterian software stack with everything that comes from that, uh, along with that, with the Aterian suite and so forth. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Nico. That was very helpful to understand. I think that answered a lot of these questions that we often hear when we talk to manufacturers, when we talk to developers. If there are any more questions that you have, please connect with us, get in touch. We're more than happy to talk to you about any specifics, any questions. Um, if you're curious to learn more about SkyNote, go to our website, uh, get in touch again. And yeah, and also tune in to our next session when we're live here. And until then, um, yeah, goodbye and have a good time.